scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are days in the Bible that it will say in the fourth month of the days and that the word of the Lord came. I'm praying for you that tonight will be one of such days. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. May God bless you. We have a lot to do. It's a miracle service. And you may have heard me say that God's method has always been his word. The way he lifts is by his word. The way he blesses is by his word. Hallelujah. The Bible calls it the sent word. He said he sent his word. And his word healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. We are considering matters around dominion psalm 8 psalm 8 we'll read from verse 2 psalm 8 i have been very challenged by some of these scriptures we're about to share today myself and like we challenged ourselves yesterday i believe that there is a burden in the spirit for greater witnesses in experience the world is getting tired of our propositions without the grace components to defend it the bible says that we are called witnesses and a witness is a validator of a claim a witness is only necessary when there is contention over a matter are we together when you get to the court of law um, when there is a contention over that matter the judge will demand for the presence of a witness and the assignment of a witness is to validate the truth to bring an end to all arguments. So when we say we are witnesses, the Bible lets us know that there is an attitude that the world has towards us. They will not believe until they see. John 4, 48, Jesus was speaking and he said, except you see miraculous signs and wonders, he says, you will not believe. This is a generation that will not believe stories, and the kingdom was designed such that men will hear and see. Remember yesterday, we considered Acts chapter 8 from verse 5, that Philip went down and preached Christ in Samaria. Then the Bible says the people gave heed with one accord to the things that he said. And the reason was because they heard and they saw. Not just that they heard, they heard and they saw. That is verse 6. They heard and they saw the miracles that he did. What were the miracles? You find that in verse 7. The Bible tells us very clearly in verse 7 that there were all kinds of supernatural manifestations. Unclean spirits, clined with a loud voice, came out of them that were possessed with them. And many who had palsies, those who were lame, were healed. The result of all this is found in verse 8. The Bible says, and there was great joy. In the city great joy great joy in the city hallelujah praise God our media people I'm sure there'll be someone walking with me so that when we call on the scripture maybe someone can assist whoever is at the uh, the desk there so that we need to walk together projecting the scriptures thank you very much hallelujah so Psalm 8 Psalm 8, let's begin from verse 2. Psalm 8 and verse 2. 
very deep contemplation that we have the psalmist was a very interesting man he understood the presence of God and even though he did not walk in certain ministerial dimensions as we know like Samuel but as a king he was an interesting king he doubled as many things even while as a king he was a worshiper he was a man who understood the presence of God and he entered into prophetic realms that were even beyond the scope the jurisdiction of um, that which came with his office it was him that saw some of these things that we're about to deal with so the Bible says verse 1 really when you start it says oh Lord our God and all of that um, it begins to extol his name verse 2 says out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger verse 3 when I consider thy heavens the works of thy fingers the moon the stars and all which thou hast ordained now here's the question what is man he says that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him it says verse 5 thou hast made him a little lower than the angels the correct translation there is Elohim not just the angelic Keda are we together thou hast made him a little lower than God and thou hast crowned him with glory and honor now he's describing man he starts by saying what is man you seem to be so vulnerable and mindful of man you are not ashamed to declare your vulnerability over man what is it that you have put in this man this mysterious entity who has secured your attention every once and again and he describes all that God gave to man thou made him to have dominion he says over the works of thy hands pay attention now and thou has put all things how many things all things under his feet verse, verse 6 we'll stop there thou has put all things under his feet now this is a reality as far as God is concerned whether that becomes an experience in my life or your life depends on another set of spiritual dynamics but that it is a fact that in God's designing man he designed man such that nothing that he created will be higher and above man are we together now Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 the Bible says God said let us make man in our image and after our likeness, we can spend all night discussing that because because those are two things, species of God's creation being created until that time that sustain these two attributes of God, his image and his his likeness of God talks about his functionality having two hands one hand. E bronz che manasha di la scovrenska balika pratus che brighe di balaku sebenicia. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, technical people. May God bless you in Jesus' name. All right, so let's sit as we continue. No moment should be wasted in His presence. Hallelujah. Um, you'll be surprised what has happened to you within these minutes of praying in the Spirit already. There is no waste in his presence provided your hunger your passion is there um, God is always ready to visit so we're discussing two things we said how that man was made in the image and the likeness of God a military man has both power and authority 
demons have power but they do not have authority you see that now so when he says behold i give you power it is authority and power the word exousia capacity the legitimacy to stand in my stead are we together this is very important now very quickly so that we save time i wrote two things here that i want us to really understand number one is the definition of dominion in simple terms that dominion is the right to govern the right to govern dominion talks about sovereign control dominion talks about authority so when we talk about the saints coming into a place of dominion we're talking about walking in the reality of that God-given right, the ability to exert influence over the cosmos, the ability to bring all things that were created by God in perfect alignment with his will. Now, every time God gives man power and authority, he also defines jurisdiction. Man does not have authority everywhere. The domain of our, jury, our, our authority is well defined. For instance, we do not have power in the throne room. There is no record of man having the ability to manipulate things there. So the realm of our dominion is defined. Are we together? When Paul came, he began to list all the realms wherein man's dominion um, resides. So it's important for us to get that, that dominion is the right to govern, the legitimacy to exert power. Dominion talks about authority. The implication of this is number one that man from the time god made the statement let them have dominion the implication of that statement is that man became the legitimate steward the legitimate ruler of the earth as simple as this statement sounds it is very profound because if you do not have this understanding you will not be able to walk in authority and experience that man not man and another creature not man and another spirit are we together yes there's only one entity of God's creation that was given dominion over the earth and that entity is called man I don't have time to describe for you what a man is but not every being God created can be called man there are conditions that must be met for any entity to be called man. Number one, you must be a spirit. If you are not a spirit, you cannot be called man. Number two, that spirit must be domiciled in a mortal body. If that spirit is not domiciled in a mortal body, it cannot be called man. Number three, there must be solical faculties that help that spirit to enjoy the duality of realms, to be able to enjoy the realm of the spirit and enjoy the physical realm. Any entity that has these realities cohabiting is called man. Demon spirits cannot be called man, even though they are alive. Animals cannot be called man, even though they have bodies. Are you seeing it now? So I want you to know that if you are called man, it's a special privilege. It's not an insult at all. It's an exalted name. It's a position. That's why God himself became a man to be able to save men. And today he's exalted and seated at the right hand of the Father as a man. Are we together? Because based on the law of territory, if you do not have a mortal body, you are illegitimate in your operation. Is the reason why the Holy Spirit requires human bodies, even though he is God. Is the reason why demon spirits require human bodies. And when they cannot make do with human bodies, they will make do with animals and make do with other species. You must have a body to give you legitimacy upon the earth. Are we together? The reason why we know Jesus will return is because he left with his body. So he does not need a virgin again to give him another body. He can return. We are assured of his return because he left with his body. The first time he came, he needed the cooperation of a woman so that his spirit will have a material flame, frame to legitimize his operation in the earth. But now the apostles told us that he levitated right in their presence to heaven. And he will return. He said, this same Jesus, he will return as you have seen him go. Are we learning already? Very, very important. Man. 
So it means that man is the legitimate steward of the earth. That means in God's mind, man has been put in charge. This is very important. But it's important to know that you've not been put in charge to do everything you want. The jurisdiction of man's operation is with respect to the will of God. Your assignment as far as dominion is concerned is to be a conduit that becomes a perpetual um, manifestation of the will of God. You see that now? Everything within the kingdom revolves around the will of God. Now, the second implication of this statement, let them have dominion, that God said to man means that nothing can happen, nothing legitimate should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and man's participation. This is powerful. Nothing in the earth was designed to happen and can happen without man's cooperation and man's participation. If you ever see anything good that happens in the earth, there was a man to partner with the spirit of God. If you ever see anything evil that happened in the earth, there was a man. The reason why Satan looks powerful is because there is still one human body cooperating with him. The basis of his strength is his alignment with man. Are we together now? This is why Satan's obsession for bodies was very clear in the Bible, including the body of a dead man. A body has thou prepared for me. Is someone learning already? This is very important. So nothing, including what God desires to be done here tonight. Isn't it amazing that there are people right now who, based on prophecy, God has ordained that your healing is this night, your lifting is this night. And yet, as powerful as prophecy is, it must come in partnership with man to find expression. The man in John chapter 5, Pastor Akin, there was a man who was at a pool called Bethesda. It was not because there was no possibility of solution for that man. Are we together? John chapter 5. The Bible tells us that that man had been there for 38 years. And then when Jesus walked up to him and said, Will thou be made whole? The Bible says the man said, I have no man. Not I have no God. I have no man. The reason why my situation has been prolonged here is that even though there is a possibility for my healing, the man to walk in partnership with the will of God and make this happen is not there. I have no man. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. So everything that happens on earth, we enjoy a wonderful moment of worship. It's not just this evening that God wanted to reach you with that atmosphere of worship is that the spirit of God as powerful as he is, is limited by the cooperation of men. This is profound. When you know this, you will know how God, the position that God placed man in. Isn't it amazing? That people will come all over in a crusade ground, many who desire to be saved, and yet they are never saved until a man is able to preach the gospel to their hearing. Angel Gabriel came directly from the throne of God, and yet... The reality of Jesus' arrival was hanging in the spirit until a man. Be the conduit through which the word will become flesh. That means the more men are available to be used by God, the more the possibility for dominion and revival at a territorial level. Did you hear that now? The advocacy that God is not looking for men is very wrong. Very wrong. A body has thou prepared for me. The formula is always the spirit and the bride say come. The spirit has been saying revival. The spirit has been saying come. The spirit has been saying healing. But there are not sufficient men. And don't you think one man is enough? Mm -mm. I know we have the idea that one man is enough. You ask Elijah. Elijah was almost frustrated because he thought he was the only one. Mm -mm. If one man were enough, then the 12 apostles would be enough to finish the work. But he said this promise is unto you. And to your children to as many as are far off even as many as the lord will call are, are we are we learning now because the concept of dominion must be seen as a concept 
beyond ministry, beyond men of God, beyond apostles and prophets. Every time we talk about walking in dominion and power, signs and wonders, and all of these dimensions in the spirit, usually people shut down their minds and say, I'm not called into ministry. So we leave that mandate for the apostles. I just want to be spiritual enough to have a good prayer life, a good word life, be a faithful person in church, a faithful worker, and that's enough. No. The mandate was not to be a church member. The mandate was not to be an apostle and a prophet. All of those descriptions are just the geography of the witness. A witness is a validator. Men available to allow the program of God, the purposes of God to come to pass in and through their lives. So he said, let us make man. And in making man, let us ensure that nothing happens on earth. It is on this basis that we pray. The prayer of the believer is predicated on revelations like this. That nothing on earth should happen without the participation of a man. That means if you allow things to happen in your life without cooperating. You see that now. You have a right to vet realities in the realm of the spirit. And select them by intelligence and allow the ones that must manifest. So if you wake up seeing yourself for instance, maybe dying or in a grave. That is a proposition from the kingdom of darkness. They are working with your mind, needing your cooperation. It's not something that must happen. No, there is an immigration system from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. The name of that immigration system is called man. If a man does not allow that revelation to pass, it will remain in the spirit forever. But because Satan knows that the saints are ignorance, he will manipulate your mind to think it's a done deal. And your discouragement is a gateway, is a passage for it to manifest. Job said, the things that I feared has come upon me. That the spirit of fear became an illegitimate way of opening that gate. I hope you're learning already. This is very powerful. So every time God wants to move among men, he looks for men. I sought for a man. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. I sought for a man. In Isaiah chapter 6, when he had an encounter with Isaiah, he says, whom shall I send and whom shall go for us? And he said, here am I, send me. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God is still looking for men. Don't you think the men he has are enough? And I'm not just talking of men. Uh, there is a kind of man that God is looking for. Men who can walk in the reality of dominion. Are we together now? You see, the reason why sometimes the program of God is aborted is because usually there are few men who have labored in the spirit to attain a level of stature that can host certain dimensions of God. And because they are few, and because the price to host that dimension of God is great, when those few men are attacked, the program of God dies within a generation. But the assignment is not just to have few men, it's to have many men. This is why the temptation of celebrity Christianity is very dangerous. Every time God anoints a man, your assignment is to raise as many men as fast as you can. Not just enjoy the stage. Because the more you raise men, it is for your own safety. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Imagine if Noah died on the way while building the ark. There would be no earth again literally the preservation of the earth was at the mercy of one man may god find many men many men that includes you in the name of jesus christ provided there was one jesus satan started moving through herod to look for him and kill him straight up because multiplication is a threat to satan he hates multiplication that is why he likes barrenness. It's not about a woman's womb unable to give birth. It is part of his advocacy to stop the arrival of men. Are we together? It's important for you to know that God is mighty. He can do without us, but he has incorporated us in his program. Now, people say that God needs men to give him permission. I don't believe that. Men do not need to give God permission. The earth is the Lord. However, they need to participate and cooperate with him. He is able to raise up stones. You see that?
but God demands the participation of men. Listen, if you understand this, we can pray and share the grace and go. Because many believers are not yet convinced that they are important in God's program. They are convinced that some man of God or some worshiper is important. You see, if I ask you, is Pastor Joaquin important in God's program? You will nod a thousand times. But if I say, how about you? You may just say yes, but truly, many of us have not internalized it. You have not yet seen yourself as being significant in God's scheme of things. So the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1, it says, Amplified says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have put you. It says, Rise to a new light. Arise, shine. Why? For your light is come. Your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Then it says, For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but upon you the glory of the lord shall arise then it says gentiles i like this gentiles they shall come you will not look for them gentiles shall come to your light what kind of force will compel gentiles it's called light it never said they will come to you you have been angry that they have not come to you there is no assignment for them to come and meet you it is the abundance of the light you carry that compels gentiles to come to you then it says they are kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to you and they are kings to the brightness of your rising this is very powerful so dominion of man upon the earth means that nothing should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and man's participation now let's go very quickly to hebrews chapter 2 please give us 5 and 6. i want to answer a question very quickly and then we'll pray hebrews 5 and verse 6. please help us thank you jesus it says for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection watch this now the world to come whereof as we speak he repeats psalm 8 verse 6 now let's hurry up he says for as he said in another place thou, thou art a priest for me after the order of melchizedek we're, we're getting something wrong hebrews chapter 2 did i say 5 My, 2 from verse 5 please media help us correct that is hebrews 2 and verse 5 2 and verse 5 thank you for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak uh -huh. he said in a certain place that certain place is psalm 8 he testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him verse 6 he says thou hast made him lower than the angels you have crowned him with glory and honor and you have set him over the works of your hands verse 7 he says thou hast put all things say all things in subjection under his feet he says for in doing so you left nothing that was not put under his feet but 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 now today in lagos in nigeria in africa now we do not yet see this is the question we have come to answer in this conference that we look at prophetic realities from god's standpoint and God is saying, know this for a fact, that I've put all things under your feet. As far as I'm concerned, the man on earth should exert dominion over elemental forces, dominion over principalities and powers, sicknesses, diseases, poverty, failure. Everything that is antichrist should be compelled by the dominion of the saints. But the Bible says, but now, but now, in spite of the scripture, there's still a lamentation coming from the camp of believers but now we do not yet see all things there are some things that have stubbornly refused to bow like the diseases and the infirmities plaguing your body and they don't seem to respect your prayer life even though you are praying it looks like they do not want to go how about the poverty situation how about yokes and curses in spite of your confession i am free the bible says but now but now whether you walk in the spirit of dominion or not is up to you now and my assignment very briefly is to show you something tonight this is very powerful 
God is crying for a generation, ladies and gentlemen, that will be able to be a manifestation, a living manifestation of God's intent and desire. Let me recap on two scriptures I shared with you yesterday. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10. It says, we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. It says, unto good works, which God had before ordained. He's not scratching his head wondering to what to make out of your life. My brother, my sister, hear me. Your destiny has been defined already. Lo, I come, he says, in the volume of the book, as it is written, written, written. It is already written that there are realms of the anointing you should walk in. It is already written that there are dimensions of prosperity you should carry. It is already written that there are levels of wisdom you should walk in. His workmanship. Then Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 says, Now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church, the ecclesia, the manifold wisdom of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared, watch this, with the glory that shall be revealed. There is a dimension of God's glory and power and wisdom. You know what glory is? Everything that makes God God, his wisdom, his favor, everything, the multifaceted dimensions that are captured in God is called glory. The glory of a thing is a description of why it is desirable why it is expensive why it is valuable so when you want to understand the glory of god you will have to dissect the attributes of god and study them one by one his goodness his wisdom his riches his power and yet the bible says our mandate in exerting dominion is number one that we become a reflection in experience of the nature the character of the Christ and then exact so tremendous level of power and authority over the cosmos that will compel all and sundry to come to Jesus but let me tell you the truth the context of Christianity we are selling to our generation is such that is grossly misrepresenting Jesus in as much as we have done well commendations to our efforts so far the standard is still far short far short of what can bring revival there were men like philip who entered cities and in one day they shut the cities down not by making noise elijah did not say there will be no rain in his tv station you did not need to hear you would just know that there was drought in a land and say who caused this one man the bible says time will fail me to talk of men like gideon jephthah barak men who faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions these were men these things were not parables they were men who walked upon the earth it is time for us to in addition to reading history become a continuation of the same and an improvement of the same we have read generals cover to cover we have read apostles and prophets in nigeria cover to cover it's time for a generation to become a living continuation of those things that men begin to study your life not for the purpose of personal pride but you become a mystery and a wonder first to yourself and then to a generation exerting power and glory that is incontestable is someone learning now now hear me dominion is not an impartation there is a grace that enhances men to walk in dominion but walking in dominion kingdom authority that elemental forces get to respect your voice he says jesus i know that means the realm of the spirit can know some people paul i know i hope i've elongated the list now joshua selman i know call your name there how dare they say they do not know that name You don't claim that realm. It's a revelation that brings you there. Are we together now? Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus. Chapter 1 from verse 15. And he made certain definite prayer points. If you understand the Pauline epistle, it begins to create the framework for your walking in dominion. I wish we had the time, but this is a miracle service. But I want to give you 
five dimensions of knowledge very quickly that you must have if you want to walk in dominion it is impossible to walk in dominion no matter how well intentioned you are but let me assure you up front that in the name of Jesus the spirit of grace has come to help this generation there is a standard God has for us and we will not fail we may look ordinary but we are becoming we may look ordinary but we are evolving one conference after another one prayer meeting after another one worship session after another a little here a little there we are becoming there is an evolution happening in the spirit i want you to believe that if god brought you here tonight it is because you are part of that prophetic army and that paying attention is doing a generation good because you see by the time God is done with us there is a formation of an army and there are allocations to regions for you God will say that family where death has killed people that is your allocation and you step in there like a witness that you are and say I hear that there is a cause that has recycled around this family but I come in the volume of the book I come as an ambassador forged out of fire and you will exert such dominion that big principalities and powers will not be able to stand listen let me tell you this I have seen this in my vision many times in 2005 i had a very strange vision and i saw a fire like an olympic fire i saw that fire go to asia and in a strange way from asia i think i hope i hope i recall well then it came to africa fire and one like owning a candle it started resting on the heads of people and you would think it was a joke until it later spread and there were many people carrying that fire can i tell you listen there are many of you the salvation of your loved ones breaking certain ancient chains is depending on your evolving your becoming if you do not walk in dominion there are many people who will never see the light of day hallelujah listen let me submit to you preaching the gospel was never designed to be difficult it is the evidence that makes it easy that we do not have let me repeat myself preaching the gospel was never supposed to be difficult today we depend on all kinds of intellectual tools and they are not wrong but we have over depended on them because there is a gross bankruptcy of the genuine evidences Acts chapter 8 and verse 33 it says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all I have seen how people tremble at his presence when they see his power manifest the heart of man is not that hardened the evidence to unlock his hunger is just not there in one day many people began to cry that the god of elijah is god indeed even a hardened king like nebuchadnezzar at the display of dominion over elemental forces the bible says the three hebrew boys they were boys that the fire had no power over the king had not seen it in this fashion he passed a decree immediately that in all of the kingdoms around Babylon he made a decree verse now 28 I think Daniel chapter 3 he made a decree blessed be the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego a king became a preacher immediately when he sought dominion no Bible school in one moment that anyone who fights the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego I don't know his name but I know those who look like him and he named them after them that a time will come someone in your village will say I don't know the name of this God you serve so I call him the God of this person because I can only name him after the witness who represented him well do you believe what you are hearing?
I told us yesterday the kind of energy that we dissipate in spiritual activities versus the results that we see do not add up and many believers are gradually getting frustrated it looks like our prayer is not really working many prayer meetings in churches are empty not because people don't want to come is because they have learned through experience that it's like this thing has a question mark that nobody is willing to answer. The Bible says where the carcasses are, indeed, there the eagles will gather. I made up my mind that I will make my contribution to my generation in my lifetime. I cried unto God and I said, do not send me with a salmon alone. The world has had salmons. There have been orators and intelligent people before our arrival. We need substance and proof. Something that can prove the validity of the divine life. So that when you say it, God grants you grace to demonstrate that reality. We have reduced the supernatural today in church with all due respect to just falling and shouting. They have become the principal validations of anointing. To what end? As much as we do not downplay any dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, sick people fall and rise and they are still sick no go for a retreat charles and francis hunter two great men that work commendably in the power of god in their lifetime a husband and a wife adorable people i mean these guys demonstrated a dimension of divine reality men like tl osborne you see when we call these names i get i get challenged in my spirit because mantles never return to heaven that means the graces that empower this man is still roaming around our horizon why has it not landed on someone why has it not landed on someone in spite of the meetings in spite of the prayer it then means there is a kind of light that we need to have now please hear me I shared with us a vision that I had years ago yesterday. Let me just repeat it and then I just touch and we'll pray. Is God challenging someone? Hmm. So I'm open to this vision in the realm of the spirit and I see a giant door, an ancient door. And that ancient door had other smaller doors connected to it. And on every door there was a scripture that was written. And these doors were opening and closing, opening and closing. And every time they opened, light came out from them. And the Spirit of God began to speak to me that those scriptures represent revelations and pathways in the Spirit. And everyone who catches that revelation, the light represents the empowerment component that grants you the grace to defend that scripture in your life. That means any revelation you claim to have caught that cannot be proven in your life, the light or grace component has not yet come no matter how you convince yourself hallelujah it is not very difficult we have about eight billion people on earth right now and counting ladies and gentlemen if you really love god and love his program you will be concerned there are about 2.8 practicing christians out of eight billion and Jesus is coming soon for a fact. So if with everything we have done so far, this is all that could be captured. And yet he said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness to the entire earth and then the end will come. It then means God must give us an accelerator system. There has to be a way of winning nations in a day. And I tell you, it is the manifestation of the dominion power of the spirit through the saints. The number of believers we have and the potential believers if we multiply ourselves walking in power and walking in grace, nations will be subdued in a moment. Technology has proven that it is not difficult to win the heart of men. There are apps today and there are products that in as little as 10 years, they swept the whole world, taking advantage and subduing cultural barriers. French people today use phones. Spanish people use phones. Non-English speaking people use phones. And they understand everything. So what is wrong with our advocacy of the gospel that is not being able to penetrate systems and structures? 
tonight is not just for you to receive a miracle you will but it is to receive the empowerment to become a miracle a living wonder yourself that you leave this place and your life becomes an effulgence you can start right where you are that you are a man of god who came for this conference and by sunday there's fire on your altar and you see that this is a dimension that is you are not familiar with hallelujah as a student someone comes to lie down on your bed and gets up and cannot find the growth again you were not even around you deposited something a divine reality it is that reality that will make him and his friends to gather and say come please something happened when i sat at your bed that handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from the bodies of men ordinary men full of god full of power full of light and these handkerchiefs no ability to believe no ability to speak in tongues and yet they carried power let me give you very quickly i will not explain them my apologies for time i will just list them there are about 10 of them but i will give us five there are five foundational truths i hope you know that truth in scripture is represented in light john 1 5 the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not the entrance of thy word the bible says give it light and understanding unto the simple dominion in this kingdom i said earlier on is not an impartation it is a resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of God the abundance of light that floods your spirit is what translates to dominion in experience and can I tell you no other spiritual activity can replace the absence of light let me repeat myself no other spiritual activity can replace the absence of light The power of light is such that when it comes, the effect is instant. If you, a door has, a room has been dark for 10 years, and another room has been dark for two years, and another room has been dark for one month, and another room has been dark for 24 hours, if you connect them together and on the light, which one will on first? All of them. The longevity of darkness has no effect on the presence of light no matter how long the darkness has been the Bible says that was the true light that means there are false lights like the one many people are carrying it claims to be light but in the presence of darkness it cannot shine that was the true light which lighted every man are you ready five of the about 10 bodies of spiritual information that can empower the saints please i want you to really pay attention there is no superstition as far as walking in dominion is concerned no god is not a magician you are empowered by the light that you receive from within your spirit and if you fail to contend by the labor of the word and of doctrine to enter this level of revelation then it will just become a prophecy that will remain there in the realm of the spirit and never be made manifest in your life let me give it to us number one the first foundational truth you must know to walk in dominion is that you must know god i will give it to us very quickly daniel 11 and verse 32 you must know god the foundation for the believer's dominion is the knowledge of god the people that do know their god they shall be strong the students that do know their god the politicians that do know their god the men of god that do know their god that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits john 17 and verse 3 this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true god and jesus christ whom thou hast sent can i tell you ladies and gentlemen it takes time to know god it takes time to know god time invested in prayer time invested in fastings time invested in worship like we experienced earlier on time invested in the study of scripture 
There's no time to teach about knowing God. We can spend all nights there. But it's important that we contend to know God. Because the God you know is the God you reveal to your generation. Are we together? Your confidence is based on the knowledge of God that you have. It's important you know this. David had an encounter with the God of the Bible when he stood before Goliath. Ordinarily, the young teenager would have been threatened. But he said, you come to me with your spears and your bows, but I come to you in a name. I've had an encounter with God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as we read earlier on, they had an encounter with God and they could stand to say, oh king, in this matter, we are not careful. God will deliver us. But that even if he does not deliver us, we have gone past the realm of doubt. Take us into the fire. The reason why believers chicken out in the face of situations and circumstances, especially uncomfortable ones, is because their conviction is not standing upon solid knowledge. So if it looks like a breakthrough does not come, if it looks like you pray and it does not answer, we fold immediately. There is something that you know about God that gives you confidence even when it does not make sense. Abraham knew something about God that kept him for 25 years waiting. Are we learning now? You must know God. Number two, very quickly. The second foundational knowledge you must have if you want to walk in dominion is that you must know who you are in Christ. As basic as this is, this is the apostolic model that was handed over to the church. The believer's confidence and exploits in the kingdom, second only to the knowledge of God, you must know who you are in Christ. And Paul, it is at this point that Paul does such great justice to a sound biblical exegesis of who the believer has become on account of Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 3, he describes for us elaborately that transition that we are seated with Christ. We are being raised up with Christ. Do you believe that? Far above, he says, principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, every name that is named not only in this world, but in that which is to come. It's a fact you must believe. There are two things you need to believe as far as your realities in Christ is concerned. Number one is your oneness. I have come into oneness. It's called the doctrine of interpenetration. It's a mystery by which two entities become one. Listen, this is the same mystery that is applied in marriage. That two different entities born by different parents. And because of a covenant agreement in the realm of the spirit, they have become one. So you may come from the west, the east, the south, but that in Christ, you have become one. And I like the way he says it in Ephesians 6 and verse 10. He says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Amplified says, draw your strength from your union with him. That your strength is drawn from your union. Hallelujah. Be empowered through your union. The consciousness that I am one with Christ. That was what made men like John Lake that their hands could take all kinds of germs and viruses and yet it did not affect them. I tell you, if the revelation of your oneness with Christ happens to you, you will be able to speak and you know that you are not just speaking as a man. You are speaking not just under the authority of Christ, but you are one with Christ. Hallelujah. People get possessed with spirits. And you hear them speak and you look at them and say, no, this is not you. You're, the way you are behaving and you are right. So when you become full of God, many things about your life become altered. You are a man, but we vet the results and we see that these are a God class dimension of results. You must know who you are in Christ. The second is your positional advantage. You must know how you have been exalted. It's a spiritual reality. Still connecting to point two. Know who you are in Christ. Let me give us number three very quickly. The third kind of knowledge foundationally that you must have if you want to walk in dominion is you must know your place in God's prophetic program. Hebrews 10 and verse 7. You must know your place. You must know your place. When you know that there is a place for me in God's prophetic program, immediately the limitations that came from your background 
all the talk that you will not become anything oh i've come from a family where no one has risen it dies immediately because you know that you are an important component in god's prophetic blueprint hallelujah you will not have to wait for men to validate you and go through the burden of trying to secure the validation of men there is a place for you say there is a place for me let the devil hear there's a place for me absolutely only God knows many how many sounds of worship should come out of many people if they know in truth that there is a place for them only God knows how many prophetic words are locked up in the spirits and the bowels of men who have not yet recognized that there is a place for them say it again there is a place for me yes that is also true to the kingdom financier there is a kingdom project that is waiting for your giving to happen there is a prophet a nation is waiting for your prophecy to be transformed there is an esther the the entire race is waiting for you to manifest so that her man does not destroy them listen let me tell you this in passing every name you see in the bible is not just the name of believers that were used by god these names represent spiritual pathways that can produce a certain kind of believer so when you say Abraham, Abraham is not just the name of a man. Abraham is also a description of a spiritual pathway that produces a certain kind of believer. When you say Esther, Esther is not just a woman who married a king. No, no. Esther is the name of a spiritual pathway. One of the ways you know and verify that the Holy Ghost is training you is you must have a parallel of your training in scripture. As you are growing, you must evolve and become a name that is similar in scripture. As you begin to walk with God, later on you see that this formation is called Esther. The kind of consecration, the kind of dealing. Why is God bringing this oil upon me? Does it mean that Ahasuerus is coming? That is Esther in the making. You verify your training, whether it is by a familiar spirit or the spirit of God, by finding a biblical parallel. No matter how unique your dealing is, you must find a parallel of it in scripture. Are we learning now? Say it again, I have a place in God's program. Admire the Joshua Selmans. Admire the men of God. Admire the worshippers. But not at the detriment of your confidence. There is also a place for you. Did you hear what I'm saying? Celebrate all that you see and, and those that God has lifted. That includes your pastor and his wife. But let me tell you the truth. You have a role to play that Joshua Selman cannot play. No matter how anointed I am, there is that vacuum for you. And I'm praying that someone who came here tonight, you will rise up in the spirit of Elijah and take your place so that we will not rob this generation of the dimension of God deposited within your spirit. When I had the wonderful woman of God worshiping, I came in. All that was in my mind was, what if this lady rejected Jesus Christ and rejected his call? All the songs you hear today, what if Don Wen refused to be born again? What if Renhard Bunker rejected Jesus? Hundred million souls would have been lost because of one man's refusal. Only God knows how many people have been tied to this destiny looking at me vow that you will not fail say it again that i will not fail in the name of jesus christ let me give you number four so three you must know your place in god's program and in destiny are you ready for number four number four you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom you want to walk in dominion you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom the mysteries of the kingdom are the laws by which the realm of the spirit operates. Job chapter 38 and verse 33. Please give us NIV very quickly. We have a few minutes. I'll be speaking over our lives. Job 38 and 33. It says, Knowest thou the ordinances? Do you know the laws of the spirit? It says, And can you establish the dominion thereof? KJV says, 
knowest thou the ordinances of heaven but other versions like amplified will say do you know the laws of heaven that means god's idea is that the dominion of the sense upon the earth will be based on the laws of the spirit that we know and we engage you must know the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 11, it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom can i give you one final one and then we'll pray the fifth kind of foundational knowledge you must know if you want to walk in dominion is that you must know your adversary the devil you cannot walk in dominion if you act as if it does not exist we are not supposed to act as if it does not exist we're supposed to be aware he is there and to know how to put him in place john 10 10 jesus himself is speaking and said the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says but i am come that ye may have life is that in your bible and that you have it more abundantly he was apostle peter i believe in first peter chapter 5 or so he says be sober be vigilant for your adversary the devil he says like a roaring lion verse 8 walketh about seeking whom he may devour many believers do not know the devil many believers do not understand the operation of darkness and so we become victims through ignorance they know not he says neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course he says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high he says but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes five you have these five bodies of spiritual truth and it's enough to set you on fire the knowledge of god the knowledge of who you are in christ are we together now the knowledge of your place in prophecy and destiny the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom and then the knowledge of the realm of the spirit let me pray for you now let's rise are we going to be submitting the prayer requests pastor okay so here's what we'll do we have just about five or ten minutes and we want to maximize it i'm going to be praying over you i'm going to be speaking over the sick but here's what i want you to do how many of you have filled in your form your prayer card lift it up and let me see has it been received okay beautiful now everyone begin to pray please receive for those who are yet to receive and if it's possible let's have it forward as we pray very quickly Go ahead and begin to pray in the spirit, everyone. Father, this is my moment of encounter. Your word is coming with light and fire and power in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace is about to be released upon my life. There are still a few people. Please, ushers, help them. Pray. Just take a minute to invest in the spirit. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. E -I -E -I. Out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living water. E -I -E -I. E -I -E -I. Hallelujah. Now I want you to lay your hands in Jesus' name. Very quickly, let me just speak over the sick. Sadly, we may not have the time to take testimonies. I know that our time is gone. 
but at any of the sessions available you can feel free to testify but please lay your hands right now there are two people who will start running now under the anointing to come out please hold them and bring them out so they don't injure themselves literally they will start running physically just hold them and bring them out it's by the spirit of god hallelujah lay your hands i want to pray for you now hallelujah i'm seeing the number 11 and the lord is telling me these 11 people the spirit of prayer and intercession i want you to please bring them out as quick as you can 11 of them there is such an anointing that is coming it will drive you to the secret place you will begin to seek him like never before let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you now in the name of jesus let that grace rest upon you now let your power holy ghost power rest on me rest on me let your power holy ghost power rest on me rest on me let your power holy ghost power rest on me rest on me hallelujah in the name of jesus christ i'm seeing the word speed this is what is written i want to pray for someone the hand of god is coming upon you right now the kind of speed that will come to your destiny yes will be compressed in a moment i stretch my hands let that grace rest upon you now let that grace rest upon you speed in ministry speed for students hallelujah let me ask you miss Ola, can i ask your wife to come and sing me that song that that um p daniel song the hand has sing that song something is coming upon your life now hear me before i pray for the sick there are some of you the grace to be a deliverer and your family is upon you i want to ignite that fire i'm going to stretch my hand now and fire will rest upon you the fire of a warrior like Gideon, like deborah at the count of three may that man to rest upon you now one two three take that grace now take that grace now arise deborah arise Gideon, arise elijah the hand of god is upon you the hand of god is upon you upon you for your family upon you to end the reign of darkness upon you to destroy the workings of hell Say after me, everybody, as loud as you can. Say, Father, the fire for my destiny. Let it rest upon me now. Go ahead and pray in one minute. The fire that your light brings. The fire 
that makes me a witness the fire that turns me to a sign and a wonder the fire that makes a worshiper out of me the fire that makes a prophet out of me the fire that makes a kingdom entrepreneur out of me let it rest upon me Take a minute to pray, we're wrapping up. Hallelujah. Now hear me please. Hear me. There are some of you looking at your life and the family you are coming from. All that is written is Ichabod. And you are saying, God, can you make sense out of my destiny? He sent you to this conference tonight at Eden Center because there is a mantle that has been looking for you. Whether you are a student here in Unilag or you are a member of the Eden Center, I came as a prophetic midwife to connect you to that mantle that has been looking for you. And in the name of Jesus, as she sings this song again and prays for you, that the hand of the Lord will come upon you as it came upon Elijah and turn your life, turn your ministry, turn your Christian experience to an extraordinary wonder in the name of Jesus. For healing or you are trusting God for your loved ones I will soon pray for those in front in a minute but I want you to lay your hands my goodness there are some of you after this conference you are stepping into another walk with the spirit another dimension of prayer another dimension of fasting another dimension of word study until that champion in the spirit emerges let me pray for you right now Father, in the name of Jesus, shout a believer's amen. One more time, a believer's amen. Now, I rebuke, I stand in partnership with the grace upon this house. And I decree and declare that every sickness, every spirit that is at the back of any infirmity, in the name of Jesus Christ, let that sickness, let that spirit give way now. Let that spirit give way now. I decree and declare every sickness and every infirmity be healed from it now. Headaches be healed. Cancer be healed. Blood conditions be healed. Fibroids be healed. Lungs be healed. Blood conditions be healed. High blood pressure be healed. Heart palpitations be healed. Bone conditions be healed. Eye conditions be healed. Ear conditions be healed. Now whether we mention your case or not, in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, provided you came here with any infirmity, you drop it right now and walk away free. You drop it right now and walk away free. There's someone every time you eat, you begin to feel like throwing up. And you will throw up almost everything that you have eaten. 
and you don't have any particular disease but that irritation in the name of Jesus it comes to an end now it comes to an end now let me pray over everyone here who is a student the kind of intelligence that came on Daniel the kind of intelligence that the spirit brings upon men Eli who said there is a spirit in man and the breath of the almighty get men of understanding this night in partnership with the graces here receive a baptism of extraordinary intelligence a baptism of extraordinary intelligence in the name of Jesus Christ hear me anyone here who is a victim of satanic manipulations yokes and curses kinds of diabolical operations we come in the name of the Lord God of heaven and in the name of Jesus in this prophetic atmosphere it comes to an end now every yoke comes to an end now it comes to an end now let me prophesy to someone this year when men say there is a casting down I stand as a sent one of the Lord and I declare you will say there is a lifting up these hands that are lifted up I place an anointing upon them you will not beg this year you will not borrow this year my God will lift you in the name of Jesus that anyone who fights you goes down instantly in the name of Jesus Christ hear me everything that has died or is dying in your hand if you can believe this I stand as one sent of God and I decree and declare to whatever has died let it come back to like now every door that has been closed over your destiny the Bible says when they prayed and sang the jailers heard them an earthquake came and all doors opened I prophesy every door that has been closed over your destiny we speak to that door now a father be open 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 hallelujah we are wrapping up i'm using the woman of god as a point of contact if you are here and you are called into prophetic psalmistry i'm using her as a point of contact and i'm praying for you the mantle that will bring you to a davidic order of worship songs that you do not write that will come in the secret place marekes kabaratas yata let god raise on you now the mantle of a worshiper let it rest on you now let it rest on you now let it rest on you now hear me every good thing you have seen in the man of god and his wife god has deposited very very extraordinary graces on your pastor the grace for influence access to power i'm praying for you everyone who who is desirous of his grace for the sake of kingdom come may that grace rest upon you now hear me there are people who here will be praying father open my eyes to see that you need an encounter with the spirit of revelation if the spirit of revelation is not upon you the bible will remain as a newspaper you will just read stories what i'm praying i don't know how many people desire this grace but I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. May the spirit of revelation rest upon you. May the eyes of your understanding be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Finally, for this session, I want to speak over your life. Do you believe in the favor of God? Believe it or do you believe there is such a grace called favor? In the name of Jesus, 
by the privilege of the election of grace to us many who can demand and whose hands are open to receive i pray for you from today may this grace called favor may it rest bodily upon your life bodily upon your destiny bodily upon your ministry bodily upon your business bodily upon your career bodily upon your family extraordinary results by the spirit in the name of jesus christ so shall it be for those of you who your appetite for spiritual things have gone down perhaps you started with god on fair and right now as it is your prayer life has gone down your word study life has gone down consecration down passion for the house of god down i pray for you in this conference by the mercy of god let your altar be fanned back to flames by the mercy of god your prayer altar fanned back to flames your word study life fanned back to flames in the name of jesus christ and for all those who have come in front here i stretch my hands for you that the various graces you have received may they begin to speak in your life from tonight in the name of jesus may these graces begin to speak in your life in the mighty name of jesus christ please return back to your seat pastor Anki, please let me ask you to just come and just join me as i pray on this and then make the altar call we have one minute for this hallelujah now everyone please stretch your hands towards these requests i'm agreeing with your pastor and my speaking stretch your hands over these requests everyone please just obey instructions stretch your hands and you are praying i'm going to give pastor mike is going to bless and declare over this we are agreeing with god and for all those who were not able to send there's no problem you can connect by faith i want you to believe right now that god is doing a tremendous miracle tremendous miracle yes sir Lord, we come before the message tonight and we declare and decree that every question here is returning back in with answers in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree that every prayer point here is turned into a testimony. It's turned into a testimony. We close the gaps between our lives and the word of the Lord. We close those gaps tonight. In the name of Jesus, we declare and decree that these bones are moving together. We declare that sinews are coming. We declare the flesh is coming. We declare that they are standing as mighty champions. In the name of Jesus, no prayer point will escape the sword represented here tonight. No prayer will escape the sword represented tonight. Return back with your testimonies. Return back with your babies. Return back with your financial pressure. Return back with your healing. Return back with continent breakthrough. Return back with multi-million dollar ideas. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I agree with your pastor for all the members in this church and all who have connected by faith that in the name of Jesus Christ, these Egyptians you see today, may you see them no more forever. You will see them no more forever. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Now very quickly, my last function, just give me a minute. I want to make an altar call very quickly very very quickly and please i want everybody standing if you can just to honor the altar call jesus is giving someone an opportunity to know him you came here perhaps invited i see several people at the overflows either of the overflows and that includes those who are following online following by television the bible says ye must be born again and the lord is giving you an opportunity to make it right two calls in one number one there are those who are saying apostle i have never been saved i have not encountered the god of the bible but hearing you speak and even in this atmosphere of worship i need jesus number two 
There are those who are saying, Apostle, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus genuinely and truthfully. No playing games. I mean business with Jesus. I'm going to count one to five. Wherever you are, no matter how far, I want you to start running and come to the front right here as a sign of your surrender and commitment to Jesus. Once I count five, I'll begin to pray. Don't wait for anyone to be the first. Win that war. Make up your mind. Run like there's fire on the mountain. One. Let's celebrate them, Eden Center, Lagos. Are you celebrating salvation? Come. Come. Young and old, male and female. Come. Come on, rejoice. Two. Someone is running to Jesus. Someone is finally, finally putting the devil to shame. Keep celebrating them as they come. Three. Apostle, I want to come, but I'm not sure if I'm saved. Join them. Join them very quickly if you are not sure. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Now, four and then finally five. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for the boldness. Look at me. This is the wisest decision any man can make in this side of God's kingdom. In all your choices and your decisions, if you fail to receive the life of Christ and to hand over your life to him, you did not make a wise choice with your life. So thank you very much for the boldness. It's my joy and honor, pastor standing by my side, to lead you to this Jesus that we have so spoken about. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. It doesn't matter how you have lived, what you have done, he's able to give you a new beginning. He says that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting. May I request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. Say this after me as loud and as clear as you can. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep those hands lifted father thank you for the power of the cross thank you for the power of this gospel that is able to save in the name of jesus upon their declarations of faith i declare their sins forgiven and i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god the grace to live the victorious life is imparted upon you and that from hence you walk in victory only going from glory to glory in jesus mighty and matchless name we pray amen and amen okay very quickly you will be requested to move to my left that will be your right there are counselors who will have a quick word with you please do cooperate with them let's honor them as they go your right that will be my left hallelujah hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you